Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, the last chapter that we are going to discuss this semester, uh, still talking about partnerships, and this time uh, we're looking at termination and liquidation. So for chapter nine, we were looking at a partner uh, leaving the partnership. In this case, is the entire partnership that is terminated. Uh, so basically, when you're looking at these scenarios, you need to look at how are we disposing of uh, non-cash assets. And this will be like our accounts receivable, our inventory, property plan and equipment. Um, and then we need to use the cash that's available to also pay any liabilities uh, that the partnership has outstanding. And after all those obligations have been satisfied, then if there's any cash left, it will be distributed to the partners based on their capital balances. So keeping track of uh, the capital balances is essential for this purpose. Uh, we also have to keep in mind uh, as we go through the scenarios whether the partners have a positive or negative balance in their capital accounts. Uh, and also understand that the liquidation process theoretically, um, you know, it seems like it's pretty straightforward, but in practice, it might take a long time in, uh, you know, selling our excuse me, property plan and equipment in selling our inventory and getting the cash that we need to pay the partners. So the first thing that we're going to do is determine the amounts to be paid to partners in a liquidation. This is just pretty straightforward. Um, any assets are converted into cash and obligations, liabilities, uh, liquidating expenses will be paid and if there's anything remaining we will zero out and pay out the cash to the partner zero out their capital balances and pretty much everything is uh, clear out of the financials uh, of the partnership so we have an example here morgan and houseman allocate all profits and losses on a 60 40 percent basis uh, the partnership has 75,000 of non-cash assets uh, so let me just get my handy pen here so we're talking about these assets of course uh, not including cash and so we're going to have to liquidate these assets and um, get cash, pay off this liability. And then if there's any cash remaining, we will um, close out the capital balances for the two partners and close terminate the partnership. So how do we prepare the journal entries for the liquidation? Uh, so we have an example here. Uh, January 1st, we sold our inventory, uh, we sold our accounts receivable, our fixed assets, we paid our liabilities, we also had liquidation expenses, this might be in the form of legal fees, uh, commissions to real, real estate agents and, and things like that, and then any remaining cash will be distributed to the partners. So starting with our June 1st entry, Basically, our inventory was reported on the balance sheet at 22,000. We sold it for 15,000, which means that we sold it at a loss. Instead of debiting uh, loss on sale of inventory, we are directly taking uh, or reducing the capital balances of the two partners. Okay, if, if it was the other way around where we actually sold it at a gain, then we would be crediting their capital balances. And the same thing for the receivable, we sold it at a loss. So we reduce the uh, capital balances. Uh, same with the uh, land, building and equipment. 
And then after that, uh, I believe we still have some cash left where we can uh, pay off uh, the liability of 32,000, satisfying that obligation. And uh, we also are paying uh, any liquidating expenses. And again, any expenses or uh, maybe we have some revenues, then those will be either debited or credited to the partner's capital accounts. Uh, so it looks like uh, we have a remaining balance of cash of 63000 and this cash will be distributed to Morgan and Houseman based on their ND balances of their capital balances. And so we can see here, uh, we started with the 45000 that was reported on the balance sheet for cash. Uh, we reduced that cash, or actually we increased the cash by the sale of our non-cash assets, reduced it by the payment of liabilities and liquidation expenses. So we have ending balance of cash of 63000 And you can see how uh, the losses uh, from that were generated from the sale of non-cash assets and the expense were uh, debited to the respective capital uh, capital accounts of the existing partners, and so our sixty three thousand will be distributed thirty five thousand to Morgan, and uh, twenty eight thousand to Houseman. Uh, we debit their capital balances and we credit the cash and close uh, the partnership. So that was uh, very much just a simplified version of a liquidation, pretty straightforward. Uh, we were lucky that we were able to sell all the assets or non-cash assets and pay off our liabilities and have money left to distribute to the partners. Now, that may not always be the case. And so uh, partners may want to, uh, you know, it may take time to sell these non-cash assets. It may take time to pay off obligations. Uh, we may have issues with partners who have deficit balances in their capital accounts. Uh, and so partners may be you know, impatient, waiting for these assets to be sold, and they may want to receive cash now. And so there's different tools that we can use uh, in order to assess uh, the amount of payments that we're going to be making. In this case, uh, it's the same scenario, Morgan and Houseman but we have a statement of partnership liquidation. It's an extended version of the previous slides that we looked at before. Uh, it just looks at uh, uh, each after each transaction, the ending balances of cash and respective capital balances. Uh, so the question is, what happens if we have one of the partners has a deficit balance in their capital account? Um, they are required to pay the partnership to make that uh, deficit go away, at least to have their capital account to zero. Uh, if they're unable to because they are, uh, I don't know, insolvent, uh, they have declared bankruptcy, they left the country, then in that case, the other existing partners will have to cover that deficit. So this is what we're looking at right now. And that's once that we have assessed uh, that loss, then we can distribute any cash to the existing partners. So we have an example here of a partnership with three partners. Um, they are 40% um 40 percent for holland 40 percent for dozier and 20 percent for ross and as we now note on this uh very uh small balance sheet we can see that holland uh who's a 40 percent has a 40 percent interest in this partnership has a deficit so we have twenty thousand dollars of cash 
but we're unable to uh, distribute this cash to Dozier and Ross uh, because their capital balances exceed the amount of cash and we're unable to get this um, cash from Holland. Now, I think the first scenario, uh, we're lucky that uh, Holland is around and is gonna pay the $6,000. And if that's the case, then of course, we debit that to the partnership that will increase our cash account to 26,000. And then we can close out those years and Ross capital balances and distribute the cash to them. Uh, and the next scenario uh, is the fact that we cannot find Holland, he skipped town and he owes us the $6,000 and we need to liquidate this partnership. And so in this case, uh, the two existing partners are gonna have to uh, make up for this loss. This loss is gonna come out out of this deficit Will be covered out of their own capital balances and it's going to be distributed if we recall uh dozier he had a 40 percent interest in this partnership and ross had a 20 percent so added together will be 60 percent so in essence this is four six And this is two six. And of course, you know, there are multiple, this is multiple of two. So this will be two thirds and then one third. Okay, so this is how they arrive to this fraction. And then we multiply that by the 6,000. So 4,000 will come out of those years capital and 2,000 will come out of Ross's capital and this will zero out Holland's capital account and will leave sufficient cash to close out uh, the uh, two existing partners' accounts. Okay, I was hoping for a journal entry, but we didn't get one. Okay, so moving on to uh, the schedule of liquidation, uh, from the safe capital balances. And this go back to my discussion on uh, making payments before we actually sell our non-cash assets and pay our obligations. Still have to make some sort of payments to uh, the partners. So in this case, we have a partnership. It has four partners. Uh, we have liabilities, uh, we have 140,000 of non-cash assets that we need to liquidate. So in our proposed, proposed schedule of liquidation, um, this is kind of like a worst case scenario, okay? So I'm going to assume that I will not be able to sell these assets or, at the, or that they will have to be disposed at a complete loss. So that means the 140,000 will have to be absorbed by the three partners. So this is gonna reduce their capital balances based on their P&L percentages. I have assumed the maximum amount of uh, liquidating expenses being very conservative. And so I'm assuming that my cash will be reduced by the 6,000 and the 6,000 reduces their um, account balances. And then I have this liability outstanding, so I'm gonna have to pay that. And so at the end of the day, uh, I will be left with $14,000. However, one of the partners will end up with a deficit okay and since this is the worst case scenario then I'm gonna assume that Lee in this case will not be able to uh, pay the partnership the 13,800 so this 13,800 will have to be covered by Mason and Dixon and so we have a 50% 
and then a 20%. So that means that if Lee is gone, then we will be left with 70% total. It looks like it's six, but it's a zero. Maybe that fixes it. And so in this case will be five sevens of the 13,800 comes out of Mason's capital and uh, two sevens comes out of Dixon's. Okay. After that, in uh, inside that Mason has a deficit balance and again worst case scenario Mason cannot pay so this 2857 will have to come out of Dixon's capital balance and uh, that means that he's the last uh, man standing and he's the one that's going to get the $14,000 now. Now the theory behind this is that any other additional cash that we would receive um, when we sell the non-cash assets, then it will be distributed uh, to the partners based on their P&L percentages and so on and so forth. So it might max the liquidation expenses were less then and, and so the partners will be receiving, the other two partners may receive um, cash. Okay, so this is just worst case scenario calculation so that we know uh, how much to distribute of cash by while being conservative and who's the partner and how much are they going to get now. Uh, we are going to leave the pre-distribution plan for now. Uh, and we're just going to concentrate on the discussion that we just had. So this section is sort of short and sweet. Uh, it's our last lesson of the semester. So um, please um, take a look at the Connect assignment, work on the Connect assignments, and then on Tuesday uh, we'll review those. Okay. All right. Enjoy your day.